What's up, Fox Charms? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. If you're returning, hello. It's so nice to see you all again. You guys look great. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. The dogs are out and they're feeling very excited about life. So they are all over the place. So if you hear noise, it's just going to be there. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to do, um, well, guess what? An r slash anti-MLM video. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. <laughs> um, but this one is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be mostly story time. I have a, I think I have at least two or three, maybe three. It depends on how much time this ends up taking, but at least two full story times because uh, I just read through at least one of them, but they're really good. Sometimes I like to kind of do these longer stories. It's kind of fun, goes a little more in depth, really get the perspective, you know, of someone who really went through it, whatever that is. Anyways, that sounds interesting to you. Go ahead and stay tuned. They're your best friends until they're not. My experience with Beachbody. I wanted to share my experience with Beachbody. About a year after the birth of my second child, I found myself still about 30 pounds over my pre-pregnancy weight. I worked coaching youth sports at my local gym, but I didn't actually work out there. I decided it was time to take advantage of my free membership and started attending group exercise classes like Turbo Kick, Pio, and Insanity. I hadn't heard of Beachbody until then, but quickly learned that those workouts are part of the Beachbody brand. I soon began to get acquainted with the instructors and other moms who took the same classes as me. Most of them had the same job title listed on their Facebook coach at Beachbody. One of the moms slash instructors took a particular liking to me. She was everything I wanted to be, this charismatic, fit, extroverted, popular blonde. She really took the time to introduce herself to me. She showered me with flattery. I've been watching you come to my classes for a while, and I'm so impressed and proud of how far you've come, you rock, type stuff. She friended me on Facebook and Instagram and was always loving and commenting. Did I just make a friend? It's not easy making friends as a grown-up, especially when you have kids that eat up such a huge portion of your time. On top of that, I've always been on the quiet and introverted side, so making friends has just never been easy for me. One day, she messaged me and said she's having coffee at a local coffee shop with a couple girlfriends, and she would love for me to come along. Of course I accepted the invite. I got there and she runs up and gives me a big hug, telling me how glad she is that I made it. Two other women show up. We get our table and introduce ourselves. We just shoot the breeze for about an hour. This is the companionship and camaraderie I've so desperately desired. Eventually, she gets down to why she really brought us there. Beachbody. I was very hesitant. I understood that the goal was to recruit other people, not necessarily sell the products. Right now, this group were my only friends, so who was I going to recruit? But I figured it would push me out of my comfort zone, which can be a good thing, so I agreed. I don't remember the exact prices, but there was a sign-up fee of about $150, a $10 monthly coach's fee, and then here's where they get you. Buying the Shakeology is required, and that is $100 a month. My husband and I weren't in the hottest place financially, so when I heard about that, I just about shut the whole thing down. But I didn't. I figured I could make it work even if I just broke even. Life got crazier. Two young kids, I had just started nursing school, I was working part-time nights as a nursing tech, and my marriage was becoming increasingly strained. I simply did not have time to entertain being a coach. I was very honest with my upline and told her that my goal was to be able to focus on it more when the semester was over. She was so kind and understanding. She'd send me text messages just asking how I'm doing, if she could do anything to help, blah blah blah. It was great to feel like someone cared for you. About four months after I started, and still minimal effort on my part, because of my schedule and still not really knowing how to approach others, I lose my ATM card. This is the one I used to sign up for Beachbody. I contact my bank and they cancel the card and issue me a new one. A couple weeks later, I get an email from Beachbody saying that my payment was unable to be processed and to contact them. I decide that it's best that I give it a rest for a while. The Shakeology payment was killing me and I just don't think being a coach is right for me at the moment. I explain this to my upline in a message no response. But I was promptly blocked by her and the other women in our group from social media. Two years later, I still work at that gym. I still see her. She still teaches group exercise and shills Beachbody. She ignores me anytime she sees me. Those two other women that were at the coffee date, one is still in and the other has been blacklisted the same way I was. I like to look at her Instagram every now and then and find her ever-evolving group of soul sister besties to be funny. Their fake laughs in the pictures, their fake poses, their fake and empty words about support, community, and kindness. 
I am so weary of making new mom friends now. Two moms recently approached me after one of the group exercise classes we all attend together with all sorts of flattery. You are a beast. I'm always so motivated by watching you. Yeah, I peeked on their social media and one sells Zaya Active, the other Naora, which I guess is Narium's rebrand. They will be kept at arm's length where they belong. First response. I am so glad you lost your ATM card. I've never been glad about that really happening to anybody before, but I am really glad you lost your ATM card because that really was probably the thing that got you really out of that because it sounds like you were having a really hard time, you know, telling them no. And I understand. And, you know, it's not, I don't want to appear like I'm being critical. Like, I totally get it. This, the way they duped this person into thinking that she was part of their friend group, you know, like, <sighs> the hugs i'm so glad to see you you're so awesome the the social media posting and all that type of encouragement like it's really a form of psychological control it really is and that's that's one of the things on the bite model too they they talk about um when someone basically sees the truth or whatever they are blacklisted their 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 backs are all turned to that person and that person becomes an outcast and that's what happened to this person they became an outcast and that's really really sad because I'm sure you can tell by this is probably a very nice person you know probably too nice as a lot of us are hello case in point me I, I it's one of my biggest flaws I think is I can often be too nice to a fault and then it takes all the energy out of me and soul sucking you know what I'm talking about but um, I am really glad that this person is out now, I am sad that they lost any money to begin with and were hurt by the Hunbots, and that's just terrible the way they were treated. Um, secondly, I didn't actually know before this, but I didn't know that Shakeology was part of Beachbody. I thought it was its own thing because I'd heard of both independently, but I didn't actually know that they were smooshed together. But I don't know why that, that's not exactly surprising. Um, also, those two MLMs at the bottom, the Zaya Active and the Naora, I don't, I haven't heard of those before, but I'm going to guess based on the setting of where these uh, Hunbots were trying to pitch their particular companies, I'm going to guess there's some type of health thing, you know, similar to the Shakeology, Beachbody, Herbalife, whatever, you know. And, um,. I don't know, I guess in summation, I, I, I'm really glad that this person's out of it. I hope that they learned a valuable lesson about when the right time to say no is because let's be real, everybody, there is always a right time to say no, okay? It is not a bad thing to say no. It's actually very healthy. And I need to take my own advice on that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, moving on to the next one. <laughs> Clearly, this is not story time. This is a picture, <laughs> but I just had to share this with you. So in my video I posted yesterday, there was a photograph from a Plexus convention. Well, guess what? This is from that same convention taken by the same person. Um, and I'm just really glad that uh, whoever found this saw it and screenshot it and put it on Reddit for all of us to enjoy and or cringe at. But either way, the words on the screen that they are showing, this is a huge convention and they have this big like television screen. There's a stage. It looks, the lights, it's very dramatic looking. But the words on the screen are where I find the biggest problem, okay? And it says, your plexus business is an assignment from God to help you build your faith. That's disgusting, okay? They they are using people's faith against them, okay? To be like, God wants you to give us your money, your hard-earned money. God wants you to give it to us. That is so garbage. That is such a trash way to manipulate people. And I tell you what, I try really hard not to cuss on this channel. I'm not totally sure why, but I'm trying really hard not to. But this makes me want to cuss up a storm. It's just so trashy, just taking advantage of people. And you know there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of people there who are seeing this and absorbing this crap. So, oh man. Yeah, Plexus. Jesus for pink drinks. No, no. My prize was an MLM pitch. So here is a story about how I was utterly disappointed because I was dumb enough to think I finally won a prize. So I'm a local model and get booked a lot for local bridal shows. We wear gowns and model them for soon-to-be brides. At the shows, there are booths of different wedding vendors, musicians, caterers, photographers, cake decorators. A lot of them do drawings to win things like vacations, spas, etc. 
Between shows, the models can walk around the convention and mingle, and a few of us entered our names into drawings, thinking we would never win. One of my friends came as a bride and won a cruise at another show. I was newly engaged, so it would have been awesome to win something that could have gone toward the wedding. I entered my name to win a facial. It was described as a free luxury spa facial, and the winner could bring a friend. I got a message a few days later that I'd won. I was super excited because I never win this kind of thing. I decided to bring my mom, thinking she deserved the pampering. Being genuinely excited and telling my mother, I can't believe this, I never win anything, we show up to the location. Instead of a zen-like spa that they described, we walk into an open echoing convention room with a bunch of round tables and other confused looking women sitting on them. <laughs> we were asked to sit and after about five minutes, I realized this was going to be an MLM pitch because I could see the flock of women in their heels and professional attire standing next to their pile of BS products. These ladies took the names of everyone who entered and told them they'd want a facial. The facial was this. They squeezed the product, Mary Effing K, onto a tray and had us put it on ourselves. They gave us wet cloths to wipe it off. They also played a game to see how many names and numbers from your contacts you could write down in a minute to win a prize. The price was a cheap bead bracelet with an elastic band. My mom and I were too polite to up and leave in the middle of it, and we just sat through an hour of these women trying to convince us to join their cult. Honestly, I was irritated, but more disappointed. I had this idea of how nice and relaxing this luxury facial was going to be and how my mom would love it. Also, I was embarrassed to fall for it. Well, that last uh, sentence really resonates with me. That's just a really natural human emotion. Um, <laughs> but really, though, the, when she described that they're supposed to be in a zen-like spa and then they walk into an open echoing convention room and all those confused-looking women, <laughs> I mean, the visual, I, I had to really control. I wanted to laugh really hard and loud at that one, but as I was reading, I had to control myself. <laughs> but I do think it's just paints a, a hilarious and obnoxious photo. I'm uh, really glad that this particular OP didn't get involved in it and realize what was going on and got out of it. I'm sorry they wasted an hour of their time. Um, <laughs> but you know, she can think about it as like bonding time with her and her mom where they both uh, um, just narrowly avoided joining a cult together. <laughs> And I also like how the, the facial, this amazing facial, is just some Mary Kay goo that they put onto a tray that they had to put on their own faces. Like, I feel like one of the best things about going and getting a facial done at a spa is that it's someone else washing your face. That's the best part. Someone else is doing all the work and you can just relax. Like, that's why people like them, not just that they're good for your skin. It's like a full package. And then they give them wet cloths to wipe off. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds like the most unrelaxing kind of experience, especially in that large room. And I'm sure it's just full of terrible fluorescent lighting, which is just great. Really relaxing. So zen. It's so zen. <laughs> And for the obligatory cute animal photo today, it is Tippy and Boots enjoying an afternoon nap on the kitchen floor. It is just starting to warm up over here in the Pacific Northwest, so clearly they are overwhelmed with the heat. It's only like 70 degrees inside the house, you guys. It's not even that serious. <laughs> They're so dramatic. <laughs> but I'd recommend to anybody who's looking to get a new member of their family, a new love of their life, to please adopt. Don't shop. Check out your local humane societies, your local shelters. Donate if you can. Volunteer if you can. And don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. All right, Fox Trotters, that's going to do it for me today. If you liked that video, please hit that like button down below. If you have any good ideas or suggestions, comments, leave that down below as well. If you are not already, hit that subscribe button. Become a Fox Trotter. It would be so awesome, and I would appreciate it so very much. We like to laugh here. Oh, we do have fun. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you are. And until the next video, as always, take care.